you're listening to the Prepper Recon Podcast. For questions, comments, and podcast archives, go to PrepperRecon.com. I've personally been buying gold and silver from JM Bullion for over two years. They offer the best prices over spot that I can find, and I've never had a problem with an order. If you're looking to trade in some of your fiat paper for real money, check out jmbullion.com today. This is the second half of my interview with Paul Munson from Sun Oven International. Enjoy the show. Your product, the Sun Oven, it's got several uses that can help in a long-term power outage. Uh, In fact, you've developed... 13 ways to harness the sun's power to save money and be prepared. So let's let's go through some of these 13 ways, uh, and let's start with number one. You've got uh, bake. So talk to us about some of the things we can bake and, and, and what we can expect when we bake with a sun oven. Well, I, I do want to mention, too, as we get into that, and I'll explain the baking in just a second, but the other thing to keep in mind with a sun oven is that Oftentimes, being prepared can be a, a tremendous drain on your budget, and you know it's hard to set aside food for tomorrow when you're trying to feed your family today. But so many people tell us that just by using their sun oven, not just for preparedness but for everyday cooking, that they pay for it relatively quickly. And when it comes to baking, you know, on a day when it's over 80 degrees, if you bake bread in the house, you're going to spend more money to cool your house than the cost of the bread and the energy to cook it combined. So when you can bake your bread in the sun oven and do it outside, it really then, besides for being delicious, there's some, you know, it adds a lot to the taste of the food, but um, it also um, makes it so that you don't have the same kind of bills then um, on cooling the house. So it it can make a difference. But you can bake uh, bread, you can bake up to a 21-pound turkey in a baking bag in the sun oven and Pretty much anything that you bake in your regular oven can be baked in the sun, but in the sun it doesn't dry out and it doesn't burn, so it really is a nutrition i mean a very delicious way to be able to bake pretty much anything that you want to bake and it comes out great and no energy cost and the sun really gives it a unique taste and then uh next is boiling, so we can boil with our sun oven. What's what's the approximate time it takes to for water to boil in a sun oven? It really depends. If you do realign the sun oven every um, 30 minutes and you preheat it, you can get a pot of water boiling generally in about 40 minutes. But probably the most important consideration when it comes to boiling is actually the cooking of preparedness foods. If you've got the freeze-dried or dehydrated foods and you look at the label on the the packaging that comes with it, whether it's a can or package, it will always tell you to boil water first and then pour the boiling water over it and stir it and mix it in until you're able to get the right, um, you know, mix it in and, and then it will rehydrate. But in the sun oven, you don't have to boil the water first. All you need to do is to take 25% less water than the instructions tell you to take put the food in a pot, put the water in at the ambient temperature, mix it together and put it in the sun oven, and that then allows you to be able to, um, it will rehydrate without boiling the water first, which saves energy, but also use 25% less water than you would if you were, um, so the potable water you need to have is quite a bit less. But it's great for boiling rice, it's wonderful for your preparedness foods, um, Beans, when they're boiled or simmered in in the sun oven, um, beans get a really, really unique taste. And so many people tell us they just can't believe how different beans taste um, when you boil them in the sun oven. So anything that you boil on the stovetop can be boiled in the sun oven, so it's not limited to baking. You can use it for boiling as well. And uh, steaming, of course, and that's a great way to cook fresh vegetables because you lock in a lot of the nutrients. Is that right? Right, yeah. If you, um, There's steamer pots that uh, are available for the sun oven, and when you steam vegetables in it, um, besides being delicious, then you retain a lot more of the nutritional value by steaming vegetables. also good for steaming things like pasta as well. So you can pretty much uh, steam anything if you have a steamer pot in the sun oven, and it comes out really good. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. 
In the Days of Elijah, Book 2, Wormwood, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, Everett and Courtney Carl have survived the seven seal judgments which devastated the planet, but have their efforts to stay alive been in vain? The next series of judgments to fall upon the earth are known as the seven trumpets. Within this series of cataclysms is the earth's collision with a giant asteroid known as Wormwood. The comet will poison much of the planet's fresh water supplies, making survival nearly impossible. With each subsequent trumpet judgment, their odds of living grow slimmer. If Everett and Courtney are to survive, they'll need perseverance, faith, and a great outpouring of providence from the Almighty. Buy your copy of The Days of Elijah, Book 2, Wormwood, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today. Dehydrating. You you mentioned that you've got the, that nice big orchard. I, I suppose you uh, dehydrate some, some apples in your sun oven? Mm, you know, we dehydrate apples and we dehydrate pears and um, the sun oven is great for dehydrating. You can um, normally, when you cook in the sun oven, there's a glass door that you latch the latch tight, and that traps the air inside the sun oven, and it gets hot, and then it gets up uh, to full baking temperatures. And or if you turn one of the latches in and you set the glass on top of it, then it's able to um, you're able that keeps the temperature lower most of the time. When you dry in or dehydrate in the sun oven, you want to dehydrate at a temperature that's someplace um, around 110 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So you definitely want, when you get up to 180, you're cooking. But uh, the sun oven is designed so it can be used as a solar dryer dehydrator and um, there's a dehydrating kit that's available for the sun oven that allows it to um, then uh, dry um, four layers or there's three racks and parchment paper and then you can do four layers of drying at the same time. So it, it makes a wonderful dryer dehydrator. And then there's pasteurizing water, which we just talked about, the the risk of water contamination in most any type of this disaster, whether it's a flood or a hurricane, uh, that's always a risk is, is uh, contamination in your water. And you can pasteurize your water with the sun oven. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure. Um, you can boil water in a sun oven if you put it in a pot with a lid on it or in a mason jar, but you can also pasteurize water. Now, of course, at most altitudes, water boils at 212 degrees, but it takes as much energy to bring water from 200 degrees to 212. So boiling water is somewhat energy intensive. Um, you pasteurize water, which kills the same biological contaminants that boiling does, but water pasteurizes by bringing it to a temperature above 150 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes. And that will kill the same germs or biological contaminants that boiling does. The advantage of it is that it's a lot faster. And there's a little device that's available for the sun oven that's called a WAPI, or Water Pasteurization Indicator. And uh, that's a, got the, it's a plastic tube with wax in it, and when the wax melts and goes to the bottom of the, wa- of the plastic tube, you know the water is pasteurized, and you can take it out of the water, and the wax will reharden, and you could use it over and over again. But by being water above a temperature of 150 for six minutes, you kill all the same contaminants that you would with boiling, um, just you can do it a lot faster with a lot less energy. And hard-boiled eggs. And for that, you don't actually have to boil the eggs. Uh, you just you can actually cook them in the, the, the cardboard container, uh, which is less rare, I found, than, than, than I thought when I, I thought, oh, well, there's, you can't find too many of those. But uh, I'll keep my eye out for them. But uh, we started collecting them, and we've actually got a, a pretty good collection of them now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when you make hard-boiled eggs in the sun oven um, – you actually, as I said, you don't use water. If you just take one egg and you put it right on the shelf of the sun oven, um, if you preheated the sun oven in about 35 minutes, you'll have a perfect hard-boiled egg. Um, Or you can do up to two dozen eggs by taking cardboard egg cartons and ripping the lids off of them and putting them right on the rack inside the sun oven, and they'll hard-boil fine. But the reason, the real advantage of doing hard-boiled eggs without water in the sun is fresh eggs. 
we raise chickens and we get a lot of fresh eggs. Well, anybody who gets fresh eggs or, you know, is involved with raising chickens knows that if you hard boil in water a fresh egg, it's just about impossible to peel. There's a membrane that builds up between the egg shell and the egg white that makes it really difficult to peel. And if you hard boil without water in the sun oven, then the egg will, that membrane completely disappears. So I've taken eggs within 20 minutes of dropping out of a chicken, hard boiled in the sun oven, and they come out perfectly. The reason you do it in cardboard egg cartons is that if you put a whole bunch of eggs in a pot, they'll hard boil fine in the sun oven, but anywhere the eggs touch each other, they get brown spots on the white of the egg. But if you take and spread them out in egg cartons, they will uh, hard boil perfectly without water. What I usually do is preheat the sun oven. If I'm going to do two dozen eggs, I put them in for about an hour. And then after an hour using a oven mitt, I'll take one egg out, I'll set it on a flat surface like a table and spin it. And if it spins nice and evenly, then I know it's hard boiled. If it's wobbly, then I put back in for another 15 minutes. And if you've never tried it, next time you hard, have a hard boiled egg, before you peel it, just spin it and you'll see it, it, it spins real nice. If you've got a soft boiled egg, spin it on a flat surface and you'll instantly see the difference. So you don't, uh, there's no difficulty to know when the eggs are done. And in a preparedness situation, now of course what most people do who get fresh eggs is they'll date them and put them in the refrigerator and, and wait a while before they attempt to boil them. If you get them at the supermarket, generally they've been stored for a long enough time that boiling isn't an issue. But you know, in a preparedness situation, if you didn't have refrigeration, having the ability to have the hard-boiled egg and not have to worry about um, the issues of peeling could be huge. And sun tea, I, I, I love uh, I love fresh tea. Yeah, if you take um, uh, and put uh, water in uh, mason jars, if you wanted, you could do as much as six quart size mason jars, and depending on the type of tea, if it's regular tea, generally you use um, about um, four or five tea bags in a mason jar, put it in, and you get wonderful sun tea. So it's, it's you know, a great way for, you know, a great thing to do, um, you know, to make sun tea in it. And uh, preparedness foods, I suppose you can do uh, canned foods as well. Uh, you just pop the pop the top off of it and just stick the, the the can straight in there. Could you do that? Yes, yes, absolutely. You could do that, um, and um, you can. You know, it works. You know, really well for um, the preparedness foods, as I mentioned, because you don't have to boil the water first. But you can just take a a can of any kind of a regular food and. Um, put it in there and uh, you know they'll they'll heat right up. Um one thing else I wanted to mention about water by the way that's probably the most important thing because in talking to people preparedness supplies that it's one of the things that people don't consider and that's hot water. You know on a daily basis the average American household uses more energy every day to heat water than they do to cook. Think of the number of times that you turn on a hot water faucet every day to do dishes or laundry or for personal hygiene. And, you know, in a preparedness situation, you'd still need hot water. And so you can use the sun oven just to heat water for doing dishes. When you finish the cooking while you're eating, you can put um, a pot or mason jars of water in the sun oven to have hot water available. And if you were going to have to use something like a wood fire or charcoal or... Um, butane, you'd use a huge amount of energy to just have hot water. So the sun oven is also good for just hot water to use for things like personal hygiene um, or uh, being able to do dishes. Yeah, we've got one of those little camping showers, and uh, I just I can't even think about having to use that with uh, with cold water. So, uh, <laughs> and if you're having to use it, you're probably going to be very limited on on what you can do to get that water hot. So, uh, yeah, hot water that's 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 key. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And you can sterilize uh, medical instruments in 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 a sun oven mm-hmm. if you needed to. Is that yeah, right? A lot of a lot of organizations that take uh, medical missions trips into developing countries will take a sun oven with them, and what they do is they initially heat water to clean the instruments very thoroughly, and then they'll take and put uh, use the sun oven like an autoclave. They'll put a pot um, 
of water in and literally let the instrument steam and use it like an autoclave to make sure they're completely sterilized. And in a preparedness situation, there will be times where you would need medical instruments to be sterilized. And uh, again, the amount of energy that would take could be significant, but if you can do it in the sun, you don't have that same risk. And uh, what about enhancing winter sprouting? Uh, I noticed that's number 11 on your list. Um, how does that work? Well, um, anybody who sprouts knows that uh, when you try to sprout um, in the winter, it's difficult because most people will sprout in their um, kitchens. And, uh, you know, I know you're in Florida, so you probably don't have quite the same thing that we do here in Illinois and throughout most of the country. But sprouting thrives at temperatures between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And, of course, in the summer, it's easy to find a place in the house to do your sprouting where it will stay at a a nice warm temperature, but in the winter that's a lot more difficult. If you take a sun oven and normally you latch the glass door of the oven down for cooking, but the, the same as I mentioned for dehydrating, if you turn one of the latches in towards the center of the sun oven, raise the glass up and put your sprouting in the sun oven when you're not cooking in it and put a long burning candle in with it, you'll find your winter sprouting will thrive. and. Uh, the sprouting in the winter will go actually faster than the summer, and there's not going to be harm if you want to take, you can use the sun oven year around for cooking, so if you take the food, the, the sprouting out for a few hours while you cook, it's not going to do any, um, it's not going to harm it in any way, but by putting it into the sun oven and then putting a candle in, it thrives. You still rehydrate it the same way that you would in the summertime, um, and you do pretty much everything the same, but uh, with a candle in the oven chamber, it works out perfectly. And if for any reason the candle were to fall over or there's nothing that's going to catch on fire, there's no damage that you're going to really worry about occurring with it. So it's a very safe way to enhance your winter sprouting. And then killing infestations in grains and dried food, foods, uh, that's number 12 on your list. That's a, it's. This is also a really, really good reason for folks to – to use buckets for for storage that if you've got a whole lot of, of dried beans and rice and and pasta and those types of things uh that's all susceptible to weevils uh not all the beans but you know like the the dried uh peas and things like that a lot of that stuff's still susceptible to, to weevils as well and uh and if you've got all that stuff uh in in buckets sealed off with with lids um if you get it in one thing, you won't necessarily get it in everything else. But if you've just got it all sort of on shelves um, and you, you you bring home a box of pasta and it's got weevils in it, they're going to find their way to just about everything you've got. Um, but but still, let's say you've, you've got them cordoned off in a bucket and now you get in that bucket and you really need that food in there. Uh, talk to us how we can kill off that infestation. Yeah, any kind of bugs that infest your food storage or dried grains, um, if you take them and put them in the sun oven and you bring it up to a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes, you're not going to change the composition of the food. You're not going to start cooking it, but it will not only kill the live bugs, but it will kill the bugs in any state of development they're in. So it allows you then by taking and um, heating it to 140 degrees for 10 minutes, it will then kill off the bugs. Unfortunately, it still means you're going to have to pick the bugs out of it, um, but um, at least you don't have to throw away the food. And a lot of the, like, weevils and things like that, um, you know, once you've got it killed off, you put it in the water, the bugs will float to the top and the, the, the food will sink. Yeah, and with, with most bugs, that will occur. So you can um, just, you know, put it in the water when you're ready to cook it and then let them float to the top and, you know, just um, use a, a – basically scoop them off the top or um, use a, a net to, to kind of scoop them away, and uh, that's a good way to get rid of them. And then uh, use number 13 you have is a Wonder Box or Retained Heat Cooker. So talk to us about that. Well, um, a lot of the preparedness manuals and things will talk about wonder boxes or wonder baskets, and the concept of retained heat cooking is pretty simple. 
if you get your food going and you get it more than half cooked using a, a campfire, using butane or propane, and then you transfer it into a well-insulated box or basket, it will the retained heat from the the food that's been cooked um, in the pot will allow it to stay at a temperature. As long as you're above 180 degrees, you're cooking. So it basically allows you then to let your food finish slow cooking in a, um, a well-insulated box. Well, the sun oven's exceptionally well-insulated to trap the heat in. There's a, a plastic outer box on the sun oven, but then there's a metal inner box, and between the, the, uh, the, the inner box and the outer box is a very thick bed of a non-toxic food-grade fiberglass insulation. So it's very, very well-insulated. So if you put a pot that's hot inside of it, it will uh, retain that heat for a long time, and you can use it like a wonder box or a wonder basket. And so if you're trying to conserve fuel by starting your food earlier in the day, getting it partially cooked, and then transferring it into the well-insulated box, it finishes slow cooking, and you use you can use as much as half the fuel, less, uh, I mean, if you're, about you can it's pretty it's better to get it over half cooked so you can use about 40 percent less fuel that way and still have your food well cooked and that's something that's going to be really really useful in the winter if it's snowing or cloudy uh rainy days or at night time exactly you can use the sun oven year round but the key with the sun oven is there has to be enough sun to cast a shadow so if it's overcast at a point because you can't see a shadow, whether it's raining or snowing or just, you know, a gloomy winter day, um, then you can't use it outdoors. But you could still actually use it to, for as a slow cooker um, if you start your food with another fuel source. So that's a real advantage, particularly in a long-term situation where power would be in short supply. And we've got a banner on PrepperRecon.com. It's on the left-hand side uh, on the sidebar. Uh, folks can click that, and they get a special deal. Can you tell us about the deal? Sure. The uh, The Sun Oven um, comes with the All-American Sun Oven, which is the, the newest model, but also it comes with what we call it the Hydrating and Preparedness Accessory Package. And with that package, the, um, the dehydrating racks that I mentioned um, – and a roll of parchment paper come with it so that uh, you're able to do multiple layers of drying. It comes with stackable pots. There's two three-quart enamel pots that um, stack on top of each other, which allow you then to cook more than one thing at the same time. And they have a domed enamel black lid or a glass lid that's interchangeable. It also comes with the water pasteurization indicator that I mentioned earlier, and it does come with stakes that allows you to stake it in the ground so if it's windy, it can withstand the wind. And it comes with a computer CD that's got um, uh, over 600 recipes on it, and it's in a really state-of-the-art software. So if our recipe is for four and you plan to cook for seven, what you can do is choose the things that you know fit your food storage, adjust the recipes to the number of servings, and if you change it to, say, seven servings, it, it automatically adjusts the recipe and then allows you to print it out. And it also comes with a set of bread pans. So that whole package um, normally sells, if you go to the Sun Oven website, that sells for $399. But if you click, click that link, there's a $70 discount, and that would bring the price down to $329, and that price does include shipping, and unless it's being shipped to the state of Illinois, there's no sales tax charge. So um, the, the price of $329 using the discount um, uh, that that link will bring you to um, include shipping as well as sales tax for any place other than Illinois. Paul, we appreciate you making that great deal available for our listeners, and uh we appreciate you making time to talk to us today. Well, thanks so much. It's good to catch up with you and uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime soon, somewhere along the way. But um, uh, trust that uh, hopefully this may be of help to other people. And uh, our website is just sunoven.com. And if any of the things I've talked about people are curious about, if they go to sunoven.com and they click the button that says how to use, 
there's videos on how to make hard-boiled eggs without water or how to bake bread in the sun oven or how to make a turkey or how to dehydrate. So all of the topics I talked about, if people want more information, if they just go to sunoven.com, click the button, how to use, they can see a video on pretty much all the subjects that we talked about today. Paul, thanks again. Thanks a lot. God bless. Goodbye now. Ready-Made Resources has a limited number of PVS-30 night vision scopes for $4,700. These are the top-of-the-line night vision scopes used by the U.S. military, which normally sell for over $11,000. Turn your 12-hour rifle into a 24-hour rifle. Visit Ready-Made Resources to get your PVS-30 today.